Welcome to the Sauce and Gravy channel. This is Johnny Mac. Let me walk you through how to make three rib roast sauces. Two creamy roasted garlic horseradish sauces and a bonus au jus. We'll begin with the prep work for the creamy roasted garlic horseradish sauce. You'll need at least one head of garlic for each creamy horseradish sauce. Grab your trusty blade that's nice and sharp. Cut the top third of the garlic head off, exposing the garlic cloves. And save the top of the garlic. We can use the tips to help make our au jus. We can put that into the dripping pan. But check out this garlic. Look at those cloves, nice and exposed. Time to get the garlic ready for roasting. Grab some aluminum foil and put the garlic in the center. Take some olive oil, drizzle it on top. It's okay if it spills over. You wanna make sure that the garlic is well coated. Season it with a dash of salt and a little bit of pepper. You can even put some herbs on there. Put some fresh herbs, put some thyme, put some rosemary, whatever you like. Spice it up. Make a little pouch for the garlic. Grab that aluminum foil and wrap it up. And if your garlic cloves are small enough, you can place them into muffin tins. I find that it's a little bit easier to work with that way. But if you don't have that, you can put it on a baking tray. Now they're ready to be popped into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or about 206 Celsius for about 40 to 50 minutes. And here's a tip for you. For the best flavor for the roasted garlic creamy horseradish sauces, I would make them at least one to two days in advance. That way you'll have the full flavor of the roasted garlic and the horseradish in that cream sauce. When taking the garlic out of the oven, they're definitely hot, so let them cool off before handling, but check it out. These garlic cloves, nice and tender, loaded with flavor. You can use a small spoon to take them out, you can use a butter knife to kind of scoop them out, or you can just squeeze them out, but they're soft, they're tender, and they're power packed full of flavor. So that takes care of the roasted garlic cream sauce prep work. Now let's work on the prep work for that au jus. The flavor for the au jus starts off in the pan. Whatever's in that pan with all of the drippings, that's gonna add to the flavor of the au jus. Add two carrots roughly chopped to the pan. Drop in two stems of celery. If they have the leaves on the top, that's perfectly fine. You could throw them in, that'll add flavor. Next, we'll add one full onion. It doesn't really have to be peeled. We're gonna strain this all out in the end, but you can take off the top layer of skin and then give it a rough chop and throw it in the pan. You can really add any sort of vegetables or herbs, or you can even throw some fruits. If you wanted to put a little bit of a lemon in there, why not give it a little bit of a citrusy taste, go for it. If you like it, chances are it'll probably taste good. And remember the tops of the garlic that we cut off for the roasted garlic cream sauce? Well, here they are. Perfect use for them. Throw them on into the pan to make that au jus. Give it a little bit of a garlicky flavor. And now for some richness, some earthiness. This is optional. Some people don't like it. Some people say, why are you putting a fungus into the sauce? But I like mushrooms. It gives it a little bit of flavor. One cup, 65 grams, throw it on in. And last but not least, some fresh rosemary, a handful, drop it in for an aromatic flavor. If you have any parsley or fresh thyme, throw it in as well. And then I like to use a little trivet to prop up that roast. And if you don't have one, it's not all lost. Just prop up that roast on top of the vegetables. To help sear that rib roast and give it a nice crust, drizzle a little oil on it. I'm using olive oil, however, you can use any oil that you like. Rub it in and add some spices. I'm adding a little bit of garlic powder. Mustard powder, dash of thyme, a little bit of pepper, and a dash of salt. But you can add any sort of herbs or spices that you like. Throw it on, it'll add flavor, and that's what we're looking for for this au jus. I like my roast medium rare, so I'm gonna cook it at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna drop it to 325 or 163 Celsius for 15 to 17 minutes per pound. Prep work's done, now let's hit the sauces. We'll begin with a roasted garlic horseradish cream sauce. For this recipe, I'm using one head of roasted garlic, but if you like it really garlicky, you can use more. But one thing to watch out for is whenever you first make this sauce, it's not gonna taste that garlicky, but as it sits, that garlic flavor is gonna come out. But use a spoon, a knife, a fork, anything that you have to pulverize that garlic to get it ready for the sauce. Grab a nice high-sided mixing bowl, preferably one that doesn't move whenever you whisk, and add half of a cup of heavy cream, or roughly about 125 milliliters. You can always use a damp tea towel if your mixing bowl doesn't have a plastic bottom to keep it from moving, but grab a whisk and begin the kitchen workout. Whisk the cream slightly until it just starts to thicken up. Next, it's time to add half of a cup or 125 grams of sour cream. Give it a mix and then drop in that roasted garlic. And again, I'm using just one head of garlic, but you can use more if you like. 
Grab some horseradish. I'm using ground horseradish. You can use prepared horseradish. It works just as well. Four tablespoons or roughly about 55 grams. Adjust the seasoning, sprinkle on some salt and a dash of pepper. And then we mix. And check it out, nice and thick, ready for that rib roast, prime rib, a French dip sandwich, you name it. But oh, we're not done yet. We're gonna give this roasted garlic horseradish sauce a little bit of texture, some fried onions chopped. I'll add this at the end of the video. But that's it, that takes care of the first rib roast sauce recipe. Here we go with rib roast sauce number two, an herb and roasted garlic horseradish sauce. This is another rib roast sauce that you can make in minutes. It's perfect for big feasts like Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner or just any big occasion. Grab a mixing bowl and add one cup of sour cream. That's about 250 grams. Grab that roasted garlic, smash it up, pulverize it, make it nice and smooth. I'm using one head of roasted garlic, but if you are a garlic freak and you really like the taste of garlic, you can add more. But keep in mind, at first, it's not gonna taste that garlicky, the sauce, but as it sits, the power of that garlic comes out and infuses into the sauce. Time to clear the sinuses and make those eyes water a little bit. Some ground horseradish, four tablespoons or 55 grams. Throw in a few herbs, some chives, one tablespoon of dried chives. If you can find fresh chives at the grocery store, I couldn't find any, use them. Throw in a fourth of a teaspoon of ground mustard, a fourth of a teaspoon of ground thyme, and just a little paprika. Hit it up with some black pepper and a dash of salt to taste. Break out that spatula and mix away. And there you go, in the blink of an eye, you've created another outstanding rib roast sauce. Works well with prime ribs, steaks, throw it on a French dip sandwich, you name it. Now for our final rib roast sauce, I'm gonna show you how to make a classic au jus. All right, so that rib roast, it's been cooking ever so gently in the oven. Now it's time to take it out, let's see what we have. It has a really nice crust and it rendered a lot of drippings onto the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna turn all those bits and pieces, those drippings that fawn that flavor in the bottom of the pan into our au jus while the rib roast rests. Place the cooking tray on a burner over medium heat and add 1 fourth of a cup or 63 milliliters of red wine. Use a flat bottom spatula to scrape the bottom of the pan to get all of those bits and pieces, the drippings, into the wine. Reduce the wine down for a couple minutes until it's just about gone to remove the alcohol taste. With the burner still over medium heat, drop in two cups, that's about 500 milliliters of beef broth. And it's always a good idea to scrape the bottom of the pan again to make sure that all of those bits and pieces are up, but reduce this down for approximately five minutes until it's more or less reduced by half. Once the au jus has been reduced, take out all the big chunks, put them to the side. It's time to clean up the sauce. We're gonna strain it out. The au jus can be strained out directly into a saucepan and put over low heat until you're ready to serve that delicious rib roast or you can put it directly into a gravy boat. I'm straining it out into a clear measuring cup so you can see what the sauce looks like and how much it rendered. But check it out, it's nice, it's dark, it's rich. It rendered about a cup and a half. That's about 375 milliliters. Before you serve it, give it a taste, adjust the seasoning, add some salt if necessary. It really depends on the saltiness of the broth that you used. But there you go, pretty easy. That's how you make a classic au jus. Now you're set for the holidays like Christmas or Thanksgiving or any big event. But now to finish up that roasted garlic horseradish cream sauce. Grab a handful of those fried onions that we chopped and sprinkle it on top. And there you have it. Two roasted garlic horseradish sauces and a classic au jus for a standing rib roast. Thanks for watching the Sauce and Gravy channel. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button to learn new sauce and gravy making tips and techniques. If you're looking for additional rib roast or prime rib sauces, check out these other two videos. They are great sauces and you know what? I'll see you next time.